Hello, this is the library instruction session for COM 300 visual communication uh, with Professor Davis Barber. I'm John Hickok. I am the communications librarian, and I'm going to give you a, a overview of this assignment you're going to be doing for this class. So your assignment is analyze a visual image drawing upon uh, a minimum of five sources. Now, Professor Barber has said that two or more must be from a scholarly source. So a scholarly journal article, a book, or an encyclopedia. So you have to have a minimum of two. Two more may be from a non-scholarly source. Uh, so a website, a magazine, a newspaper, but only two. You can only have two non-scholarly. Um, your fifth one, your fifth uh, source, uh, minimum five, can be uh, an interview with an expert or a professional or a professor. It, can, it cannot just be your friend. Um, but if you don't have anybody in mind, you don't do an interview. And then in that case, you just uh, need to do another scholarly source, a third or more scholarly source. Okay, so that's your breakdown of your five sources. Now, how about the structure of your paper? Yep, you got to do your intro and you got to do your conclusion. Okay, you will be graded on those, but the meat of your assignment, the, the main, main part you're going to be graded on is the perspectives. That's like the core middle part of your paper. And so he, Professor Barber has already explained that there's six different things you're going to be discussing. Your personal perspective, okay, how it appeals to you, what it says to you, the historical perspective, the technical, the ethical, the cultural, and your critical, uh, like what, what can be learned from this image. All right, so that's your breakdown, and that's where you should be focusing your your um, all of your resources and what you're writing to be on that. Okay, so where do you go to start finding your sources? Okay, this handout I'm going to put in two categories. A is the internet. You're going to yes, the internet is a source. You can go get some uh, some of your sources. B is library resources. Okay, so B. Now, within B, there's a several different kinds of library resources I'm going to be showing you. One is um, is using OneSearch for ebooks. Yes, books ebooks is one of the possible sources you should be uh, thinking about using. Um, also in the library is the next kind, databases for scholarly article. I'm going to show you how to get into those. And then finally, also in the library, is databases for encyclopedias. Encyclopedia articles is another place that you can go. Okay, so let's go through and let's explain each of these. First, using the internet. Yes, of course, Google is, uh, of course, the largest search engine. So it's valuable for finding information on the internet. Um, so we all are used to using just the simple Google search box. But uh, please consider using Google Advanced. So Google Advanced is still Google. It's still the same Google, but it's an advanced screen which shows you, gives you much more powerful boxes um, and filters that you can, when you're doing your Google searching, then you can uh, get a lot more precise results than just only the single search box. Um, so let's use, use an example. Suppose you're analyzing a news photo, and th this was a previous year's uh, image in uh, COM 300. Uh, a news photo by photojournalist Ramon Espinosa of the unearthed coffins of 2019 Hurricane Dorian. So this is the photo. So in Google Advance, you could type some key, uh, ter key terms and keywords. Like this box right here limits you to an exact phrase. So I could put Hurricane Dorian as an exact phrase in that box, and it will look for exactly Hurricane Dorian. And then you could put in some other keywords like coffins and photos. And then, yep, by doing a Google Advanced search like that, you pull up all kinds of legitimate websites. It's like this one from Time Magazine. All Mowgli, everything was broken, blah, 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 from Time Magazine, and then there it is. Now, Time Magazine is a well-respected um uh, website of news magazines. So that would count as one of your non-scholarly sources, a website or a magazine. Um, what wouldn't count is if you just had some silly blog, like, you know, oh, uh, uh, I like drawing coffins.com or something <laughs> stupid. Yeah, um, that's just a blog by some teenager and that would not count as a respectable source. So you have to use caution when you're using the internet to make sure you get respectable and um, legitimate sources of websites. Okay, now let's move on to using library resources. 
The first one I'm going to introduce you to is books and ebooks. So for books and ebooks, we use OneSearch. This is the OneSearch catalog of uh, the library's books and ebooks. Now, I want to point out right away that it's not likely that you're going to have an entire book dedicated to just only your image. No, no, it's not going to happen. So I have seen all of the photos of this semester's images that uh, Professor Barber has given you. Um, like, for example, the, the, the African child with the vulture, uh, you know, very heartbreaking photo. Um, but no, we don't have a, a whole book dedicated just to that photo. So don't expect that. Um, so and, and in this example, there's no book solely dedicated just to the images of McDonald's Golden Arches. OK, so you got to think broader. OK, we do have books that comment on the Golden Arches, but it's in a broader book, like an advertising book or a marketing design book. OK, so to find books, you do use um, one search catalog, and this is what it is. But you, what you should do is you should use the advanced. Um, advanced is going to be more helpful for you. So I'm going to give you an example here of what it looks like. I'm going to zoom in. Here's the advanced button. This is just a simple baby single box. Here's the advanced button. You click on it, and then it will bring up uh, OneSearch. Okay, you can set it for books, and then you can type in your keywords of what you're looking for. So in this case, I would look for um, keywords on uh, hurricanes. Um, I would look for the keyword um, coffins. Um, and see if there's any books that come up that talk about um, like natural disasters or such. So I'm going to give you an, ex an example of how I did use a one search and uh, using to find a book to help me with an image. Here's an example. Hindenburg, Air, Hindenburg airship crash. This is an iconic photo. This was a previous semester's uh, photo. Um, Remember, there's not going to be a book solely just about this photo. You think broader. So I'm going to type in keywords, disasters and history. Okay. That brings up a book. In our library, we have a book, catastrophe, the 100 greatest disasters of all time. And so sure enough, this book is not only about this photo, but it does discuss the photo on page 288, along with other disasters. And then it gives all kinds of discussion about that photo. OK, so there you go. That's an example of how you can use OneSearch to find books, but not a book specifically about your image, but a broader book that may discuss your image in the book. OK, you understand? Uh, here's another example. Um, but in the interest of time, I'll let you read this example yourself. And I'm going to move on to the next resource. OK, also a library resource you can use is databases to find scholarly articles. So you should be finding a scholarly article discussing your image. Now, you can do this two ways. The way number one is you can use OneSearch again. Yeah, now OneSearch primarily searches books and ebooks. But in the advanced, you can set the little circle up at top. If you set the circle right there to articles, now OneSearch will start searching for scholarly articles in all of our uh, scholarly journals in our databases. OK, so that's one way you can do it instead of looking for books. It will look for articles, too. The other way, way number two, is that you can go into specific databases and search for your articles. So database icon at the library's homepage, homepage is where you can get into specific databases. So, for example, the history database contains history journals. Sociology database contains sociology journals. The art database contains art journals and so on. So you can go to a specific database, art, history, sociology, psychology, and then you can get to those specific databases by clicking on the databases icon here at the lower left of the library's homepage. Once you're there, it'll be, give you a drop down box and then you can pick the subject or the major that you want. Okay, so um, I'm gonna give you an example. Suppose you're analyzing the famous World War II Times Square Sailor Kiss. Okay, this, this iconic photo right here. Since, so since this is a historic photo, I would want to go into a history database. So I could choose, for example, the America History and Life database. That's, that's a history database. Now, how would I get to it? I get to it by going to find uh, to databases 
And then once I'm there, you can click the major history and then get to this database, America History and Life. So in this database, it works the same way like Google and the same way like OneSearch. You can keep typing combinations of some keywords like Times Square, Kiss, um, Sailor, um, other kinds of keywords like that. When you do, when you type in those keywords, up will bring lots of different articles from history journals. Here's one, the Times Square Kiss, iconic photography from the Journal of American History. Here's another one that came up, the Kissing Sailor, mystery behind the photo. This came up from another journal, the Naval War College Review Journal. Okay, so there you go. You can do one search, and one search uh, actually searches all of the databases, the history database, the sociology database, the, the uh, psychology database, all of them at once, or you can go into a specific one-at-a-time database. Um, you can, you can do the one, uh, one search, all of them. The only problem with that is it sometimes gives you too much junk. You get flooded with a lot of, because it's searching all majors. Whereas if you pick an individual database, like a history database or an art database, you're only getting history journals or only getting art journals. Okay. Um, here's another example. Suppose you're analyzing an image that's not necessarily historic or famous. Okay, like how about this? So let's say you're you got a photo from a newspaper of this little girl hugging a puppy, and this photo is is from an advertisement to support pet adoptions. Okay, well th this isn't a famous photo, so you're not going to be able to find anything in a history journal. Um, so are you going to find any article scholarly on this? No, you're not, because it's not a famous photo. So once again, you need to think broader. Are there perhaps some articles commenting? on the emotional appeal of pet photos just in general. Yeah, yeah, there are. You can search the communications database or you can the, the marketing database or this even the psychology database uh, to find um, articles commenting or discussing about pets and children in marketing photos or images in general. So for example, to the marketing database, it's called ABI Inform, it's really good. And I typed in the keywords, ads, dogs, and sell as my keywords. And then this article came up, revealed, do dogs and cats sell more stuff in ads from the B&T Weekly? That's a, a marketing uh, business journal. So if you see, I did find an article. It's not about this exact image, but it is an article that talks about the same concept of kids and dogs. Um, and so then I can use that article as one of my scholarly articles. Finally, um, the third way of using the library is databases for encyclopedias. Yes, we have an, two encyclopedia databases. One is called Oxford and one is called Gale. And here's the screenshots of both of them. These are powerful, higher level, higher education level, university level encyclopedias. And you can go in and put an encyclopedia article about your topic. Now, it won't be about your exact image, so for example, here's a picture, a famous picture of Yosemite Half Dome. If I didn't know anything about Yosemite Half Dome, I could go into the encyclopedia, the database encyclopedia, either Oxford or Gale, and I could type in Yosemite or Half, uh, Half Dome, and it'll pull up a whole um, article about Yosemite's Half Dome, the history, how long it's been around, um, the, fo the photos that have been taken over the years, the, the uh, tourism, et cetera, et cetera. That's great for your historical perspective of your photo. So yes, an encyclopedia article can give you a good uh, overview. But once again, let's go back to that example of that African child and vulture photo. Is there going to be an encyclopedia article about that exact photo? No, there's not. Okay, so don't don't bother, don't waste your time looking for an uh, an article, encyclopedia article on that exact photo. But is there an encyclopedia about, article about famine in Africa? Yeah, sure, there is. So that is how you got to think broader. Okay, so there you go. Those are all your, your different sources. On this final last page right here, I'm just going to quickly uh, give you examples of how you might comment and how use these sources for your different perspectives. I, I don't have time to do all six, but I'll just do the number two, number three, number four, and number five. Okay, the historical perspective. Well, I already just kind of gave you an example of that with Half Dome. This is where you discuss the historical background of your image. 
So the famous Ansel Adams photo of Yosemite's Half Dome. Look at all these different uh, sources you could go to. You could go look, get a book or an ebook about Yosemite. You could get the encyclopedia article about Yosemite. You could go into an art database. Art full text is a database. Or you could do a Google advanced search and type Ansel Adams and Half Dome and get some art websites, some, some legitimate professional, not just like a blog or, or some social media. Okay, now you also have to comment on the technical perspective. So what does that mean? This is where you give the aesthetic critique of your image. So any artistic or technical consideration. So for example, consider if you chose this famous photo of the boxer Muhammad Ali standing over his opponent. Okay, this is a very iconic photo from the 1960s. You may not find any books or articles um, technically critiquing this exact photo. So you have to think broader. Does the library have any books on critiquing, critiquing photos or art in general? Like, you know, giving angle or lighting considerations. Okay, the angle or lighting in this photo make Muhammad Ali appear dramatically imposing. So yeah, the library does have technical photo critique books. So I went into one search um, and I found I typed in my keywords, photography and practice, and various books came up like this one, Reframing Photography, Theater and uh, the Theory and Practice. So in that, it gives all kinds of technical advice on photos. You could also go into Google Advance and find um, a, a, a website. So I did the Google the word Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston is the other boxer who he knocked down. Um, and then I put in words photo and perspective. Yep, lots of different uh, websites came up uh, techn uh, technically analyzing the photo, um, such as this photography website, petapixel.com, Ali versus Liston, uh, the greatest sports photo. So yeah, this website, now this won't count as one of your scholarlies, but it will count as one of your non-scholarlies. This website right here is commenting on this exact photo. So you got lucky. You have one slam dunk commenting on this ex very exact photo. Okay, number four, the ethical perspective. This is where you discuss all the ethical uh, perspectives of your image. So, for example, you might argue uh, the justification for or against uh, your the image. So let's go back to that example at the top of um, this handout, the Hurricane Dorian and the, the coffin photos. You, you may want to discuss if it's ethical or not for photojournalist Ramon Espinosa to photograph those disturb, disturbed graves. Is that dis disrespectful to the dead and to their families? Or or do you feel like, no, it's fine. And that's Mother Nature. It's uh, it's fine to take a picture of it. See, you. this is where you discuss the ethical perspective of your photo. There may not be any articles exactly discussing the ethical perspective but you can find books or articles or websites about ethics in photojournalism in general okay so i found a book uh, i typed in one search i did photojournalism and death because i wanted to see is there is there any books talking about the ethics of should we be re photo photographing things related to death and it brings up some books i found this one death makes the news how the media censor and display the dead Okay, there, there you go. It's not specifically on the photo, but it's talking about the concept. Okay. How about from the cultural perspective? This is where you're going to discuss the symbols or culture reflected in your image. So, for example, what if you chose the iconic photo of Marilyn Monroe in her windswept dress, this very famous photo? So what's the cultural perspective? Did it represent America's fascination with celebrities? Did it represent changing morals on fashion or what? Okay, so for this example, you could do your search for any of the usual library resources I've just showed you. You could go into um, books um, on one search, or you could go into the encyclopedia, or you could go into articles, or even Google and type in keywords, Marilyn Monroe and sex symbol, um, or mer uh, changing morals or dress, or any of those. And then they will pull different sources. Again, not specifically a book or a website or about this exact photo, but about the concept of the culture of the 1950s and how she changed the culture. Okay, so there you go. 
That is how you can do this assignment with library and with uh, internet resources. Okay, everybody, good luck. Wish you good luck on this.